Hello to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, we will begin, but uh, after that, um, I don't know if uh, Tiago wants to say something. Hello, just welcome you all and thank you for being here. Okay, thank you. Very good. So we will share our presentation to all of you. Uh, my account is in Russian, so it is not very easy to do it, but I will try my best. Well, uh, this is the first slide. Um, this is a presentation um, about a work we, we are developing in Portugal in this moment in uh, Atlantic University, a Portuguese university, a private one. Um, in a collaboration with uh, the Gabinet Project, it is um, a, a private company in philosophical uh, counseling. And uh, you can see the logo too uh, here, uh, the project method, uh, a philosophy for, for happiness. So this is the beginning. Um, the title of our presentation is uh, Assessing Project Method in philosophical counseling consultations. Uh, my name is Jorge Humberto Dias. Um, I am professor at Atlantic University uh, in Portugal. And uh, Tiago Pita, my colleague, is also um, a professor at uh, Atlantic University in Portugal. You have here our emails if you want to to, to continue uh, the sharing of our ideas and of our project. Um, a few words to the organization. Um, thank you very much uh, to, to all of this work. Uh, it is very important to the world, I think, in this moment of pandemic uh, actions. Uh, to to do this uh, this congress and with uh, an important title philosophical practice for self knowledge by means of intellectual creativity so congratulations to the russian association uh, so we will start start with our work uh, first of all some important milestones of philosophical counseling in portugal let me say something about associations. Uh, we have two associations um, that uh, they are working in philosophical counseling. Uh, the first one, APAF in 2004 and uh, APEFP in 2008. Um, something, uh, something about training courses too. Uh, APAF has developed nine courses and APEF. Uh, just one. The first book about philosophical counseling in Portugal was written in 2006. Uh, in Portuguese, the title is Filosofia Aplicada à Vida, uh, Applied Philosophy Applied to, to Life in English. Um, in 2008, um, we have created um, a philosophical company, uh, Gabinet Project. Uh, we have two, um, two PhDs, uh, the, my PhD in 2013 and the PhD of Tiago Pita in 2015. My PhD is about philosophical counseling and uh, happiness and the PhD of Tiago Pita is about counseling in uh, uh, human-centered uh, and person-centered too. Uh, a kind of work in in uh, in counseling. Uh, we have now uh, we are now working in a postgraduate studies. Um, we are preparing uh, a course on philosophical counseling in Universidade Atlântica, Atlantic University. Um, we 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 will begin. We will start in 2021 next year in the second semester. Um, now, some ideas about the history of the project method uh, that uh, I have created. Uh, uh, the date is not uh, 2013. This date, this year, is the, the year of my PhD, where uh, I have validated 
the, the method in my doctoral thesis. Um, concerning, concerning consultations, um, we had more than 1,000 consultations clients. Uh, this method was presented in several conferences, webinars, for example, in some ICPPs. Uh, Spain, not Spain, but uh, Italy, in Italy, in South Korea, in Switzerland, and, and now here in uh, Russia. Some training courses where we, we worked uh, these methods uh, on associations, companies, universities, libraries, etc. Uh, some publications um, in books, scientific articles, dictionaries, newspapers, interviews, etc. Um, this method has been cited by other authors in Portugal, Spain, Germany, uh, Colombia, Brazil, Mexico, uh, Argentina. Uh, this method uh, is, uh, ref was referred in, uh, in master's and doctoral works too, uh, and uh, was worked in postgraduate university courses in, uh, in, in a master in Sevilla, some years ago in a master in the Univers University of Barcelona, some years ago too, here in Portugal, um, in uh, uh, Lusófona University, um, this year in Mexico, uh, in uh, uh, Vasco de Quiroga University, and uh, this year too in Atlantic University uh, here in Portugal. Uh, now we will start another point of our presentation. Uh, we did a, a, bibliogra a bibliographic revision on three philosophical counseling journals. The first one, Journal of Applied Philosophy. The second one, Philosophical Practice, Journal of the APPA. And the third one, um, International Review of Applied Philosophy, uh, Hazel. Uh, the, the first one, Journal of Applied Philosophy, uh, belongs to Society of Applied Philosophy, uh, which is working in uh, University of Aberdeen in, in UK. The second one, Philosophical Practice, belongs to American Philosophical Practitioners Association, United States of America. And the third one, um, International Review of Applied Philosophy, Azer, uh, belongs to University of Sevilla in Spain. The first publication in the first one was in 1984. The first publication on the second one was in 2005. And uh, the first publication on the third one was in 2010. Uh, we was analyzing the questions of interest in the first publication, in the first edition of these three um, journals. Um, in the first one, in the Journal of Applied Philosophy, we found the, the, the questions of interest about uh, problems, about disciplines, and about theories on, on, um, on applied philosophy in general. Um, in a philosophical practice uh, journal, uh, we found questions of interest about training and uh, about technical concepts. And finally, in Azer, International Review of uh, Applied Philosophy, we found questions of interest about definitions, about authors, about contexts, and about cases in philosophical counseling. Uh, now, some ideas uh, we found about uh, uh, these questions uh, of assessing philosophical counseling. Uh, first one, the first one in the Journal of Applied Philosophy, we found that the first article on philosophical counseling was published in 1991 by Shlomit Schuster in the volume eight, issue two and was classified as a discussion article. In the same journal, in 2009, uh, Kate Merun, I don't know if this is the, the right pronunciation, um, also signs two articles on a team that comes close to the scope of our work. 
The first one um, was about supervision and case notes in the practice of philosophical counseling. And the second one was about cases of research at Eastern Michigan University. Fitzgibbon and Russell also presented the same issue, the same topic, but in relation to sunny Cortland, another university in New York. In, uh, again, in this journal in 2014, Zhang Lizeng published one of the articles that, uh, uh, mo that is most closely matches our theme on the advisor uh, client relationship in philosophical counseling, uh, a very interesting article. Uh, so uh, the conclusion um, in this revision uh, is that uh, from our research, no article was published about assessing philosophical counseling consultation. So, Tiago, I don't know if you want to continue. Is, uh, sure. Um, yeah. So, um, as referred by by George, we did some research, and um, because this is also more or less an empirical path, so for us it was uh, also very important not only to provide the, the the consultations, but also to try to assess what kind of results of kind of a, a change, what kind of feeling does one client. Uh, fields or leaves uh, in the consultation. Uh, we understand that philosophical counseling is growing in relevance in Portugal and also around the world. Also practitioners, clients, and um, we have also been noticing some general curiosity about uh, philosophical counseling, which we think is a very useful uh, um, uh, useful characteristic that we can use uh, to uh, to develop our our pra practice um, we know because we are also attending this for instance this kind of uh, of uh, meetings that some philosophical counselors do share their methodologies which obviously give us some information about what goes on during the uh, during a session um, Again, from the epistemological point of view, some criticism was identified concerning uh, the results and if philosophical counseling really helps the clients or not. So we tend to end the, the, the consultation and sometimes we feel that the consultation was very useful for the client, but again, we feel that is, this, it's being very useful for the, for the client. We don't know uh, what's the client perception? That's it. Uh, very good. Um, so for us, it is very important to, to understand um, the concepts um, in our work. And uh, some important concepts are this one in this, in this slide. So first of all, we, we must understand that pleasure and positive emotions uh, they are not so important uh, in our work. The, the, the quantity, for example, of the reflection and of the work is, is, uh, is lesser. So the second one is the professional realization. The third one is love and friendship. And the last one, the, the bigger, I say, uh, is happiness and life's projects. This, this, this image is, is just to, to help um, the understanding of, uh, of our work. So we will not present the method, uh, just to, 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 to say the, the levels, uh, just to, to record, to remember. The level one is to identify one's projects in life. The level number two is to analyze the structure of a project. The level number three is to relate the project with one's life. For example, work the values and the meaning of the client. The level number four is to regroup projects and define applications, practical applications in the life of the client. 
The level number five is to reinforce, um, to motivate one's life philosophy. And the final level is to verify its reality and importance. Uh, so uh, the, um, the conclusion uh, of uh, this work in this uh, first phase is that the feedback and evaluation from the clients and self-evaluation of all the process will determine the improvement and quality of philosophical counseling. So project methods presented previously draft some questions with the goal of collect the procession of its clients after the philosophical counseling sessions. And uh, this is what we will see in the next slide, Tiago. Yeah, if you allow me. So, um, since we think that it's very useful to gain as much information as we can from the, the process, and now is the, the client feeling um, during the, the process, we, we drafted the small 12 very exploratory questions um, that we, we will explain them, and we will present them, and also the results. So we only, because we had to choose the, 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 the framework, the time and framework of, of um, collecting those answers, so we got 18, 18 answers, um, 14 females and 4 males. All of these, of course, they were clients that were, uh, that were uh, working, at, that have been working in, into the project method. So um, the, the oldest one uh, was 62 years old and the youngest 21 years old. So averagely we are talking about 14.28 uh, years old client, such of speech. So we presented uh, 12, 12 questions. Some of them we give them, we give them options and I will identify those ones and the other ones we uh, left the Google form a little bit open to, to collect as much information as we could. So if you could, yes, next. So first of all, uh, for us was important, how did you get acquainted with philosophical counseling? Um, we, we see that from Facebook and, uh, and from a friend of our co or from a colleague, each one has 39% each. So um, th this gives us uh, important information because we think that too much online information, it's not, I mean, too much information is always too much information. And the good one is from a colleague. Uh, from, our, from our results, we see that we need to work simultaneously so it's very important to publicize our services but also the the what we call in portuguese the mouth to mouth <laughs> uh, the <laughs> mouth to mouth information is also very important if you find someone that you can refer to it's uh, it's very very important yes uh, so that's great ideas tiago i agree with you that's it great analysis mm -hmm. second one um in a word, what drove you to schedule a meeting of philosophical counseling? Um, again, this is this is an open uh, an open question, and we were very um, it was very interesting to 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 find these results. So we have first unhappiness with forty one percent, conflict thirty five percent, which gives us eighty eight percent of what we may call a negative. <laughs> A negative, uh, uh, a negative um, objective or a negative motivation to search. But again, all the res the research tend to if we s look for help. So sometimes we need to to do that if we are not happy or if we don't have any conflict to to uh, to to deal with. It's very interesting because in the the previous uh, lectures. Uh, the, the, the discussion was also if uh, the philosophical councils should solve a problem or not, which is very, very interesting. Also, with 12%, I would like to underline indecision. 
So these were the, the, the motivations that those clients had and with that, uh, with that information, they look for it for a philosophical counselor. So the third one, um, please explain how you felt that the motive of your consultation was dealt with. So um, I would just like to underline self-knowledge. So it seems like for these clients and these clients only, the, uh, the, the, this methodology, the project method, worked on the self-knowledge and also some kind of uh, thought clarification. Self-knowledge 30%, 30, 13% thought clarification. Um, obviously, if we are leaving this question open, um, each participant, each client, tend to um, present his own personal um, views so maybe we in the, in the because for us it's more important to know what the client is feeling and not giving three or four concepts for the for them to try to to assess um, the next one question number four would you recommend this practice to someone that you know this was a question that we provided the questions Yes, maybe and no. We are very pleased to see that mm, we didn't receive any no as a question, as a as an answer. So, eighty nine percent of our of, of our eighteen participants said yes, and in the, in eleven said maybe. Um, question five, please. So, when asked why they recommended. Uh, 39% of, of, the, of the, resp the, the responses said that um, help was, was provided. And 22% said that knowledge was provided, which is very interesting that 61% of our, our responses said that on this kind of method, either help or knowledge are the most important um, uh, concepts here. Uh, in question number six, if you, uh, if you would return to this practice, what would you want to discuss or to work? Again, an open, um, an open question. We, we have a lot of, um, this is more, uh, the answers are more, uh, more dispersed. So between happiness, uh, some of them uh, want to, to discuss or to do some kind of follow-up work and sensibility through, through, throughout life, and also some projects. I will leave the first one from Pia uh, for, the la for last, if you, if you allow me. So to answer to Taizia, sorry for the mispronunciation, were those options of answers on fifth question provided by you or generally by clients themselves? By clients by client themselves. That's the reason why we have, uh, um, I was referring to some of co the questions are, the, 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 the options are provided by, by us. And this was not the case in the question number five, five in the word why, we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, provide the answer ourselves. Again, it was important for us to understand, to leave the, the question and give the option as open as possible. Okay, uh, again, if the, mu if the music, sorry, if the question is, uh, for instance, um, did, uh, for instance, do you think that this uh, philosophical consultation helped you, which is the question number seven, then we provide the answer. So we give, yes, it helped me, no, it didn't help me, it helped me a lot or just a little. Okay, this kind of answer, the kind of, of questions, we think it's, we, for us, it's, all, it's more useful to know almost binary, yes or no, and then we don't choose a Likert answer uh, possibility with five because uh, we know that people tend not to answer not the one or the, the five, the, the, all the answers tend to be two, three, four. And so 
we try to uh, for one in one hand to to get more the more information possible in one hand and on the other hand like this kind of question we just need to understand uh, if it was positive or negative and then we have lower positive and lower negative okay so uh what do you think that the philosophical constant consultation help you so 72 percent said yes and 22 percent said a lot so that gives us um a 94 percent of positive uh answers and again the good news no had zero percent Question number eight, in a word, how did you feel during the consultations? Again, an open answer. And for that reason, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, possibilities or more possibilities. So I would just un want to underline that safe is gonna be the first, uh, the first feeling that we get on our, on our uh, question happy or happiness 26 percent and uh, being um, or feeling comprehended so understood 16 percent uh next question again yes or no question provided by us do you consider that something can be improving this philosophical consultation um which uh in the first moment that we received this kind of answers, we said, oh, come on, <laughs> is this, uh, because people tend to answer that it was helpful, but they tend to also uh, consider that things can be improved. So we were very glad to receive this 67% of answers, okay? Providing us, again, the next question. So if you think so, please tell us what. Um, and when we receive these questions, they all make sense. Also uh, referred previously in the, the previous lectures, uh, some clients, I would say most of the clients, look for a philosophical counselor to provide them to provide them uh, the answer. So they've got a problem. I don't know if I should divorce or not. Answer me. And so most of our question was that. So 40% of the, the people wanted more advice, 20% uh, more explanations. So, um, then 20% they were they wanted more support after consultation which is also a very interesting notion because we tend to think about the consultation when it's happening and we tend to forget or overlook the post consultation and finally guidance again this was the uh, an open an open answer okay so almost ending, there are a lot of methods in a philosophical consultation, question 11. Mm -hmm. Do you think that project was suitable for you? Most of the consultation, the, the, the client said, 69% of them said yes. 8% said it was uh, deeper than they thought it would be. 50% uh, of the clients said, I don't know other methods. Um, and only 8% said no. I believe that 50%, we were, we were um, expecting more than 50%. But again, um, uh, so sorry, sometimes it appears a message from, uh, from the, the chat. So I will try to finish my, my, my presentation and provide time for this kind of uh, discussion. So we were expecting more than 50%, but uh, obviously people tend to know what kind of, more or less what kind of uh, concepts or uh, methodological steps the, the project has. Finally, and um, Something that we never see discussed, or most of us don't see discussed, uh, or 
even uh, uh, ask the clients, um, do you consider that the price was fair? 78% of the, the clients said yes. Um, then, uh, uh, fair if inside the time agreed, because sometimes it was agreed on one hour or two hours, and sometimes the, the, the sessions went, the, the duration the, went longer than that. Um, so, very interesting. No one said it was cheap. Um, and some, some people said it was expensive. Just let me clarify when I say a pack of session is agreed on because sometimes we tend, we tend to um, sell the, the, the consultations not in, in, uh, by session but by a couple of sessions. It could be three sessions, five se uh, sessions and so on. Um, finally, um, for us, it's very, it was very important and interesting to have the client's feedback uh, because we think this is also essential to our improvement. Um, we also think that if we create or if we use a standardized tool that could give us information before and or after consultation could be also very useful both for client and uh, practitioner. Yes, that's it. Um, so um, after all of this work, um, we 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 try to to create another uh, tool. Uh, in, in in this case, a measurement and diagnosis tool. Uh, and why? Because um, we think it is very important to 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 plan to to prepare. Uh, the intervention, the intervention in, in the consultation um, with all of this information. The diagnosis gives us a lot of information. So in this tool, we have uh, uh, an hundred uh, questions um, and uh, uh, each of question, um, in, in, in that question, we have one factor of uh, personal happiness. Uh, we, we cannot present uh, all the tool because it is very big, but uh, we can present uh, the categories, the, the, the most important categories, uh, which is uh, five categories. So let's see the first one. The first category of this tool is about life's circumstances. So we have um, more or less 20, 20 questions about this category. Um, the second category is about emotional well-being, and uh, this this one again we have more or less twenty questions about. The third category is about physical well-being, twenty questions again. The fourth is about relationships, more twenty questions, and finally the last category is about personal realization, more twenty questions. So with this tool, we will have a result uh, from zero to uh, 100. And uh, uh, we have here um, uh, a criteria of uh, analysis. And uh, the, the results above 91, uh, the, the client may say, I live in paradise. The, the results from uh, 76 to 90, uh, the client is very happy, and the results from 65 to 75, the client is quite in joy. And finally, less than 64, uh, happiness below average. So uh, this is a great uh, um, uh, fundament, a great uh, uh, indicator to, to go to the consultation and to work hard in some topics. Uh, let me share with you some results. We have now um, some results uh, in uh, different uh, uh, organizations and in different uh, uh, experiences. Uh, this one is, uh, was the first one, uh, the first experience with the students of uh, um, the course on happiness management. 
So if you can see the results, you have the, the average of uh, 64 um, and uh, the, the minimum uh, 53. Uh, this is very uh, interesting because uh, uh, 53 is very uh, down uh, and the maximum uh, was uh, 71. Not very, not very, very, uh, not very good. Uh, I think uh, uh, when we, we look to, to, to students on happiness management, we expect um, a better results, you know. Um, this tool gives information to us about the, the specific uh, subcategories um, in, in, the, in the tool. Um, I give here uh, some examples uh, of the students um, of, the, of this course. Um, we have here uh, categories with lower score, uh, so we must work on consultation. We have this, the seven, the number seven about beauty, the number 25 about illusions, the, the number uh, 27 about depression, 36 about gratitude, 37 about memory, uh, 46 about technologies, an important topic uh, nowadays, we know, the 74 about professional conflicts, and uh, the 88 about stronger aspects in the, in the, in the personality of the, of the client. Um, so, Tiago, future research. Yes, so just to summarize and to wrap this thing up, uh, so this new tool is now ready, as, uh, as already George told you. We are testing it. Uh, we are also trying to collect as much information as possible to provide and to try to publish some, some previous results. Um, not only from the qual qualitative point of view, but also from the from quantitative, quantitative, it's very important, at least we think. Uh, these 100 questions uh, can, be, can be measured before the consultation or the process in also, and also in organization, from the organizational point of view, which is also a field that we are trying to develop, the organi organizational happiness. Um, the value of philosophical counsel can be compared to the client answer after the process. So we can see, we can give this tool, give the, the, what we call in research the before and then the after uh, session. Obviously, this is not an um, academic kind of a, a study that we, because we, don't, we didn't use a control group. Uh, and the answers can be, so it, this is also very important and very interesting. Uh, since we have 100 questions about those, uh, those five categories that were just referred, so we can use some kind of those questions also to motivate discussion and to ask the, the client uh, what kind of question did he enjoy, what kind of question made, th made him think, made him uncomfortable. So it's also very interesting information that we can use during the, the, the consultation. So uh, after this, um, we, this is our future research, so we are trying to build um, a kind of a project then that gather not only the project method of George but also my own method and and we we call it epiphy <laughs> so um, I don't know if now George would like for me to answer at least two questions or if he sure. wants to okay so because I promised Pia that I that I will answer her. so the question is do you have uh, the, the if we had some hypothesis for these questions. No, I think, we, no, we didn't. So I think even when you read the questions, some of them look more or less naive. So we were kind of honest. We just wanted people to tell us some kind of um, curiosity that we had. So, and I believe, or at least we believe that some of these questions 
they could be naive, but they, they could also be very interesting to to very very interesting to understand. First, how do we reach our clients? And second, are they getting what they want? Uh, and how can we improve our 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 practice? So to answer, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as far as uh, Oscar with a yes or no, but no, we didn't uh, have any kind of uh, previous uh, hypothesis. I would also like to answer Yashvin about the beyond method question approach. Yes, I'm presenting because I'm working with George and we were we are working on his method now. Uh, but my own, um, I'm I'm more client centered. So um, that's my approach. So for me, the method I would uh, I would go beyond method. The the reference that you that you uh, that you use for this beyond method, I'm not familiar with, but I would I would agree with this uh, beyond method. Not only agree because I use it myself in my practice, and I think that it's it. for me. That's it. Okay, uh, just just to share with with, um, with our colleagues that uh, um, this new project uh, Happy Fee um, has some characteristics very interesting. First of all, the fee of philosophy. Uh, the second one, happy uh, of happiness, and we are trying to to make a, a, um, a game here with uh, HAP. Happy and HAP. HAP because we, we want to, to create an app uh, to, to sell it or to share it uh, um, on Google Play, for example. We have tried um, a free version, remember, Tiago? Um, it is not very easy to, to, to create, but uh, we will try to, to do it in the, in the future. So, uh, I think we, we finished our presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And now we are available to all questions and debates and commentaries you, you want to, to make. Um, here are our emails if you want to use it to further discussion in the future or who knows to, to make some, some project together. Thank you very much. Um, because I, I, I was uh, uh, managed the presentation, I cannot see the the questions. So, of course. Tiago, Tiago, do you want to see which yes. one? Yes. So, uh, all I answered all that I could because then we have some uh, directed for uh, how much? Of a, could you, uh, for instance, we have another question from Ashwin. Uh, could you please clarify whether you, with your method, you did find solutions to the problems or the client of of the client, or rather the client found the solution themselves with your method? So let uh, me... another one, another one, more or less, you can answer them together. How would you describe your consultation style? It is more of accepting the client or challenging him, his judgment or worldview. <laughs> I think it is both. Tiago, do you don't you agree? Uh, I think I think in, in, in the first uh, part of the consultation we accept the client. Um, we we are answering this method. Uh, pay attention of that. Of course, we, in the future when we will present uh, the happy fee, who knows next year, Tiago, um, it will be different. I, I am sure because uh, the method of Tiago is more based in accepting the, the client in, in, uh, in all the ways. But in this method, um, the, first, uh, the first part of the work, we accept uh, um, all the world of the client, uh, the, uh, the ideas, uh, the problems, etc. And in the second phase, we will begin the, the challenge phase. Uh, so I think it is our, our answer, Tiago, to Nikolai. Mm -hmm. Next one, uh, Anders Linset promotes the. Uh, you answered this one. That's one. Uh, the only one we have two okay. that we didn't uh, answer first. It's 
Uh, how do you define the borders of scores that I live in paradise is 91 and above, but not 86 and above, for example? And I can answer to Guru, uh, what would you say is the advantages and disadvantages of quantitative research compared to qualitative research in philosophical practice? So Guru, thank you for your uh, for your question. I would probably, this is a lecture, <laughs> no, actually not a, <laughs> Not a not an answer, but I if you allow me, I will keep this uh, this uh, this question for a, a future lecture in the future ICPP if you if you prefer. Um, in the question, you have the answer. So uh, obviously, more quantitative or or qualitative research, B both of them have higher. Um, good points, strong points, and then they have also limitations. So, on my, on, from our point of view, we don't see uh, that do both of these kind of studies with 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 harm philosophical counseling. So, because we have sensibilities or tendencies more uh, numerical. Um, old academic world tend to pay more attention to numbers than to concepts, so we can provide them. But as uh, philosophical pract practitioners, we cannot forget the, the concepts and the quality also. So I believe that is a path that we need to do um, and not to forget one of those. So I, uh, we were also paying attention to Pepe uh, lecture yesterday about also the, the importance of giving some research, some numerical, numerical research, but also, and never forgetting the qualitative one. So, but then it's a very good uh, uh, question for a future lecture. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I agree with you. But the answer is, is that, I think. Um, many think of clarifications. Okay, thank you. How does the police really make a subjective and objective opinion reliably of the client's consulting situation. I, I, I don't think I understood this question. You, you understood, Tiago? Harish, Indium, the last one, I think. I think it is very similar with the question of Guru, um, subjective and objective. Um, I can say something about that. Um, of course, we have uh, some dimensions um, in, in happiness, for example, that uh, are subjective. And uh, this is the, the most challenge we have. But uh, in, at, the same, at the same time, we have uh, objective dimensions. Um, uh, for example, in the form, not, not uh, in the contents, but in the form. So the, the, the formal um, uh, research personal research on happiness, we have some uh, common characteristics. So we, we should work the, the, the objective way here in this topic. Um, we don't have any more question in, in the, the chat. So I think now we have time, uh, 10 more minutes. So um, I think we can open the microphone uh, just to experiment this this kind of experience too. So, uh, Pepe, okay, please. Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to, to see you and even to see Tiago because uh, there is a lot of time when I saw Tiago, even he's in Spain and not in Portugal. <laughs> so for me, first of all, it is a pleasure to see you and to, to, to start to, to see the results you are, uh, uh, discovering in, in your project on philosophical practice and happiness. So thank you very much to open another uh, field inside uh, philosophical practice. Um, anyone? Um, I, I, I think that uh, there is a lot of work to do in, all, in philosophical practice in, in general. And um, I think that it could be interesting, and it is a proposal, to have a control group in the in the research why because um, probably people have improved uh, 
uh, not because the philosophical consultation, but because another another issues. And I I learned with Guru Hansen in the previous conference that qualitative instruments were very important. And this is the reason because I started to study on another methodologies like case, case studies and, and, and another ones. And I think that as, as Tiago said, it is important numbers because in some occasions we talk a lot in philosophical practice and we said, okay, philosophical practice is good for developing happiness or for, the, for developing uh, critical thinking. But uh, what are the base to say it? So I think that it is important to develop research with one qualitative and quantitative data. And th I think that it, this is a point to be de developed in the, in the future international conference. Um, anyway, I think that we have to do a lot and we have to read a lot about these methodologies. And in your case, uh, I am very happy that Tiago study psychology too. Why? Because he knows a lot about quantitative issues. Um, and my question was, uh, what about a control group? And second one, uh, regarding the, the, the method, uh, the first step is identifying a project. But my question is, uh, what about uh, if the, the project of that person is inside the ideology of the society? Don't we need uh, some tools in order to help that, that people to have a critical project? I mean, uh, that people could say, uh, my project is to kill Jewish person, for example, in the Second World, in, the second world in, in Germany. My idea is, I want, my project is to kill some people. So uh, I suppose that we need some critical thinking instruments in order to uh, decide uh, what project could be good and good, what project could be bad. So my question is, inside that first step, do you have any instruments to uh, fight against uh, the social ideology? Okay. And thank you very much for the presentation again. Okay, Pepe Barrientos, thank you very much for your contribution. Um, the first part, uh, I, I think Thiago could say something uh, about the research. Uh, about the, the method, I can say uh, that work is very important on level three, um, which is uh, relate the project with one's life, uh, uh, for example, with the values and with the meaning. So it is in the level three where we will work that kind of questions and uh, it is very important to apply uh, all of that tools, critical thinking, um, uh, imagination experiences, uh, and uh, all of other tools. I, I can share with you um, a very good book uh, from Elsa Punset. Uh, this is the Portuguese edition, uh, but uh, this book of Elsa Punset, she is a, a philosopher, uh, a Spanish philosopher, Curious, uh, she has in this book two two hundred and fifty uh, exercises to 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 apply on on a philosophical counseling, and uh, some exercises could be developed to to work that question that you that you has used um, the the project of a person a bad project how can we 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 challenge the person uh, we challenge the the the, the thought. The, the, his thinking to 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 analyze uh, that questions. Tiago, do you want to say something to Pepe? Yes, of course. It's uh, also very interesting to be working in your country, uh, Pepe. Uh, yes, oh, uh, as you know, I'm also a clinical psychologist. So, and to finish my PhD, I also did a, a research, and we obviously use a control group. As you stated, and obviously, this change um, that we are provoking or providing or um, promoting in in a person can, without a control group, be also measured because the change can be happening due to other reasons. For instance, if that person wins the lottery 
of uh, or for example if a significant other dies or something obviously that that's the reason why we need also the control group to understand precisely uh, the, the the amount of um, importance that our variable is having on on the, the experimental group, and we can also we can only do that by comp using comparison uh, uh, through a control group. As you also know, we for this kind of study we need a lot of people. So at least from the statistical point of view, we need at least thirty, but. 30 is a very, very low group. So we, at least we needed 300, 400, 500. Unfortunately, we don't have that, those kind of resources yet, but we, um, as I think it was clear, we are trying to uh, organize and create some kind of uh, measurements first, and then we can set them. And then we can be, because we are, as you, th I, th I think you understood, we were very, um, um, how do you say, not, we, we, we are humble with the results. We are not saying that this method is uh, providing happiness to a client. We said that the client has the perception when he leaves that he's feeling happy or safe during the session, which is very, very different. Um, and I mean, all the other discussions about the, the need of the control group, as you may know, I'm for it. So we agree. Thank you. Okay, very good. Um, any more question? Um, who wants to, to share an idea? Uh, well, I mean, if I may, uh, okay. <laughs> this is a, a, a small provocation. Yeah, I, I, I put a, um, a quote uh, by, um, by Slavoj Žižek into the chat. Uh, which uh, I just would be curious to, to, to know what you think about. Which represents a certain view in philosophy. I can read it out. Okay, or, if or, you don't or, mind, or, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it goes as, I despise the kind of book which tells you how to live, how to make yourself happy. I believe the first duty of philosophy is making you understand what big shit you are in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I think which uh, represents um, uh, sometimes an, adi an alternative attitude that can be present in practical philosophy that basically we shouldn't think about the client's well-being or happiness or this aspect shouldn't be part of our concern at all and maybe the reverse. Um, so uh, what would be your response to that? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, 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 very interesting because uh, one student uh, at a, fi uh, a final work of the semester um, used uh, that book to 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 try to 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 give some argumentation to our classes about happiness, um, and uh, it was very interesting the discussion with the students because um, of course at the beginning. We have to decide um, which philosophy we will work or we will use um, in, in the practical way. And in that decision, we must uh, look to, to the positive way and to the negative way. So um, we, we, as counselors, we, we must uh, decide uh, for us and for, and for the clients uh, if we believe on happiness if, if we believe on, on philosophy as a positive tool to help the clients, or if we don't believe on happiness, or if we don't believe on philosophy uh, as a tool to, to help clients. That's the, the, a, a very important decision. And I think that decision we, we must be in the beginning. Um, for me, the answer is the first, the first one. I believe on happiness. I believe on philosophy has a, a positive tool to help people and to help organizations. As Tiago said, now we, we are working on organizations. We are applying our tools um, to help organizations promoting happiness, promoting um, productivity, 
promoting uh, connections uh, in the personal relationships and uh, and so on. So Tiago, do you want to say something to Alexandra? Yes, just one one sentence. I could agree uh, with the sentence, but I would add nevertheless, and then we could start working. That's it. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Alexandra. Any more question? I, I, we Thank are. You very Thank you very much. And just, yeah, for, for the record, it's not that I endorse that point by Zizek, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> okay. But thank you again. It was a very interesting presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, we are in our time, but I don't know if uh, any more question is possible. Yes, uh, we still have time before the next lecture begins. So if there are still any questions, it's possible to discuss them. Okay, thank you very much. So let's see in the chat. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, another question here, Tiago, from Guru. What do you think about the relationship between happiness, meaning, and wisdom? For instance, I have tried to argue that a name of philosophy is to nurture the will to. Yes, I, I agree with you, Guru. Um, the meaning, it is a very important topic in, in my method. As I said to, to Pepe Barrientos, uh, the third level, level number three, is where we, we work that, that kind of question. Um, and uh, uh, as I said, the first de decision of a philosophical counselor is to, is to decide if we believe or not in, in our own work. Uh, and uh, in our results and uh, in our in influencing, if, if you are influencers, philosophical influencers in the, in the, the life of our clients, um, I think uh, uh, the, the most important meaning of life is happiness. Uh, but um, uh, this is not very easy to understand because um, we must understand what is happiness and uh, now we have uh, uh, courses about this. We, we, can, we can explain, it is not possible to explain what is happiness and the, the, um, the link between philosophy, applied philosophy or philosophical counseling uh, with happiness in, uh, in a small lecture. We need, uh, we need um, some hours to, to work on that because uh, we, we need to understand the, the formal way of working and then we will uh, start to work the content, the content of happiness. And for clients, that's the most important thing because the clients, uh, when come to our consultation, they, they are asking the content, what made me happy? Um, but that is not possible uh, without the, the formal way, the methods, the, 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 the most important questions. Um, for example, if we will um, ask the, the client, uh, what is multi most important for you? Tell me the first question that most contributes to your happiness. Ooh. Which is the question that you, you will put in, in, in the first place, then the second place, then the third one, and so on. So uh, we need a lot of hours to work on that. Um, another question here of Pepe Barrientos. I think it could be interesting for this season that you explain your concept of happiness. Oh, thank you very much, Pepe, for the opportunity. Um, yes, it is very important to define happiness. Um, here in Portugal, we, we, we see a lot of new professionals. Were, they, they are not from philosophy. They are not from psychology, too. They are working on happiness, and they are from other fields. Uh, and in another research we have in Catholic University, precisely about happiness, we have a, a, a research project with this title, Perspectives on Happiness, Contributions to, to Portugal on the, the World Happiness Report from United Nations. And in that research, we found that most professionals, they don't, they don't have a, a, a definition of happiness. It is very strange. Um, you, you, you are a professional of happiness. You have, who knows, a method. You, 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 has, um, you have a, a company 
on a happiness consultation, for example, and, but you don't have a definition of happiness. So uh, I think uh, um, this is um, a very important indicator uh, for philosophers. They, they, they are in need in this field. Uh, so companies need, need philosophers. And we will have another, another course next year with the title uh, Chief Philosophy Officer. The, because we, we, we want to work this question. So, uh, concerning the definition of happiness, um, I, I said in my last article that happiness, it is um, a, a, an assessment of our projects in life. So, um, we cannot be happy doing nothing, uh, just be here uh, waiting for the sun uh, in the beach, for example, uh, no, it is not possible. Uh, happiness, um, we, 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 we must analyze the, the word. Happiness, uh, we have a, a, a verb in, in, the, in, in the origin, so to happen. Uh, so if, you want, if we want to be happy, we need to do something. We need, something must happen in our life. And what is that happen? It is our life projects. Uh, and the most important thing, not only our uh, small projects, uh, we as persons, we are fundamental projects. As uh, Martin Heidegger has said uh, in, in uh, uh, Being and Time, uh, a very interesting book about these questions. Uh, so, uh, if I have to choose just one word in my definition of happiness, I will choose uh, assessing. So, Tiago, do you want to say something about this question? Uh, not really, I think it was clear, so um, no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to add anything at the moment. <laughs> okay. So, any more question? It will be a pleasure. Uh, okay, if I may, uh, then uh, add another thing. Just thinking aloud. Do you think uh, we maybe should ask the client sometimes what is it their objective that they want to achieve for a philosophy practice? Is it that they want to achieve a more happiness on some definition, and then this can be talked through about what this could be, or is it that they want to? achieve more, I don't know, like uh, um, deeper understanding of, of life where, you know, happiness may or may not be a side effect of that, but, but that's, it, it may be irrelevant for them, or is it something else to, um, how important do you think the setting of objectives for a philosophy consultation may be for us, and the EE should, should it at all be present? Because, I mean, the, the philosophy practitioners may have different differing objectives and different ideas of what's the value, what's the possible outcome, which may be different from what the client is after. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, um, I, I agree with that question. Um, but the clients, when, when they, they come to, to the consultation, they want to be happy, but they don't say that. Um, never, never the client in the first consultation has said, uh, hello, I'm here because I want to be happy. No, it, it is not like that. They, they want to be happy. They don't say that, but they present some, some problem, some question. Um, and when we, we will begin working with, with the client uh, in a philosophical way, uh, we will discover that finally they want to be uh, happy. And in that kind of work, we will discover the projects, the objectives, the differences, the, um, the efforts, um, the challenges, etc. So um, I, I think it is very important to, to, to give some, some consciousness, um, not in the first consultation, but uh, uh, in the third one, in the fourth one. Uh, it is very important to, to, to show the, the, the mirror to, to the client and uh, to, to, to give some personal map, some personal philosophical map of the person. I do that by, in a written way and I will send to, to the client by email. Uh, and then the client um, 
um, discovers um, a new life, a new thinking, you know, because uh, the philosophical mirror, I think it is very powerful and, and very important to, to the client. And the most important thing I want to say is that most clients, they don't understand nothing about philosophy. So in, 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 a, in, in one way, we may think that uh, it is a challenge, of course, but in another way, it is better that they don't know philosophy because uh, in that way, they are more receptive to, to, to our philosophical work. And let me say another important thing to, to Gar Gargi, Jane, I don't know if I, if I spell it uh, in the right way, uh, eudaimonia, better translation of well-being. Uh, this is an interesting question. Uh, in the last month, I gave, I gave, the, um, I gave a, a, a lecture um, to the Vasco de Quiroga University about this difference, uh, the difference between well-being and happiness. And it is a very important uh, difference because uh, well-being, it is not so bigger than happiness. Happiness is bigger and most important. But Tiago, you, you want to say something? Yes, I would like to answer the question for, from Alexandra. Yes. So uh, the question was more or less like, if it makes sense to, for us to ask uh, for goals or objectives. Uh, the first, my answer is, if it makes sense to the client, of course. If it makes sense only for the practitioner, I've got my, my questions. So my kind of work, I'm client-centered. So um, if, if I see that that could be useful for the client, of course. If not, no. And I will try also in a very brief um, manner, try to answer to Guru what's the difference between my uh, George will speak about his method and I will try to answer my point of view on that question, the difference between um, our approach and, um, and other psych 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 for instance, psychological uh, approaches. So um, I'm also a clinical psychologist and for me it's quite clear. I understand uh, that someone which is which is only a psychologist or only a philosophical counselor to to see try to understand the difference and sometimes the difference is not clear but for me it's a very clear difference so when i'm when i'm in a psychological counseling i and that's the reason why i i choose to answer also to Alexander. i've got a goal i've got a i've got an objective or we can find an objective okay so we, for instance, if I'm with a depressed uh, uh, client, I will. I uh, my aim is to to remove at least the symptoms and try to understand the causes, what causes that kind of be behavior. Okay. So we got the things scheduled, and we know where do we want to be. For instance, in ten sessions or twenty sessions. Because we are, under, we are talking about a disease, a mental disease, okay? From the philosophical uh, practice, I don't deal or receive clients which are under uh, a mental disease or some kind of disruption, okay? For, his, for everyone's security, my own security, but first his own security. We can work philosophically, but we need them, we need first to, to have some balance. Okay, that's my my perspective. I know that some of psychologists and also philosophical practitioners may contest, may say that I'm not right, but from my empirical experience, for me it's very clear what kind of, of client we can do philosophical counseling with and other clients that we cannot do that with them, okay? Thank you so much for your questions. Yeah, Tiago, I agree with you. That's my question. That's my answer too. So I will not uh, say anything more. To finish, let me say something to 
Kondratieva. I don't know if I spell it uh, in the right way. Um, and just to 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 use a, an important word, just. Uh, the question is if uh, if uh, uh, this link between happiness and philosophical counseling is uh, um, is a limitation of philosophical practice. I don't think so because uh, in our definition of happiness, uh, happiness is everything. Happiness is the same thing as life. So um, if we live to be happy, so. Uh, if we will work on happiness, we will work on our life. So, who just is the, the most important word for Kondratieva. Thank you very much for your questions. So, we don't have any more time. Uh, it was a, a great happiness to be with you here. If you, if you have any more questions or if you want to develop some ideas or to make some uh, uh, connection with our projects, uh, send an email and we will answer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.